Right, and here we go. We're live with the semi-final game between Helping Hands and Von Aston. It's game one. You've got Von Aston as USF starting in fixed position one in the north, and Helping Hands as OKW starting from fixed position two in the south. It's Flexi Time Championships for the semi-final game one. Here we go. And we've got the truck coming on. We've got Volts Grandiers building, Stern Pioneers pushing to cap. Not very exciting. It looks like Von Aston's gone straight for the strong house. He's going to put barbed wire between between the what looked to be I was going to say like Kubelwagen esque vehicles themselves. It does look like a, a VW Beetle uh, convertible slightly, doesn't it? Um, but yes, we're going straight for that rear echelon. Two rifles building, standard fair stuff. Hans is crushing a little bit of yellow cover there. Of course, Relic have kindly made that yellow cover um, have an entrance now, which is great, so we don't have to vault it every time we want to get into the centre of the map. It was pretty tedious with MGs, wasn't it, trying to get into the centre of the map at the start. Great bit of cover coming up from the Storm Pioneers there. I mean, it's always good to be putting barbed wire up whilst you're in the capping circle, if you can do it, because it's just wasted time otherwise. He's now crush crushing the yellow cover kindly for his opponent, so there we go. Great uh, gentlemanly play from Helping Hands. Ghost bags up from uh, Helping Hands there, so he's in a very tournament-minded mindset now. Nothing like that is banned in this tournament. If Relic haven't admitted that it's a bug, I haven't said they are on their way to fixing it. It's not a bug, and uh, and that's what I'm sticking to. No commanders chosen yet. At Von Aston's disposal, he's got airborne, armour, and heavy cavalry. He, uh, must be said that Von Aston has complained... Well, he not complained. He tried to get a second gentleman's agreement set up. And the reason behind him trying to get a second gentleman's agreement set up was so, so he'd get rid of heavy cavalry uh, commander. Helping Hand said, I don't think Pershing's overpowered, I don't see your problem with that, and did not agree to the second gentleman's agreement. So a lot of tentative kind of feeling each other out in that sense. So will we be seeing Von Aston go for heavy cavalry company? Or was it a strategical duke? Was he just, you know, feigning that heavy commander is what he always goes for? It could have been don't see quite what the strategical advantage of that would be and of course the tell of having that commander would show itself quite soon. Riflemen in the healthier, stern pioneers haven't got much to um, you know, be in cover behind whilst they attack it so they're just going straight up to it, putting the submachine gun straight through the window and picking on a few of those, those Yankees. In the south we've got a lowly health rifle squad under fire from the Volksgrenadiers there. Volksgrenadiers seem to be in good health in general. This car's still got a no no wire behind it, so Hans is able to use that to push him. Stern Pioneers do lose two models, that is quite the loss. MG34s are available because Hans has chosen Luftwaffe Ground Forces Doctrine, which is to be expected because um, together with Scavenger Doctrine, currently, before obviously the uh, December patch comes in, they are the ways to play OKW in a competitive fashion. Rear Echelon's dropping models, Volksgrenade is pushing hard in terms of victory point control. Um, it's, you know, the tit for tat at the moment, nothing much going on there. Hans is taking the fuel of his opponent, Von Aston is also taking Hans's fuel, so good trade off there. However, here come the Volksgrenadiers, losing a man straight away. Rifles jumping in the house, they have whited the fuel, and it looks like Hans is doing the same. Rear Echelon's re retreating, Hans taking the central house, so the... Oh, and they get the shot off! Headshot! On that rear echelon, third squad, squad wipe goes in Hans' favour. RNG God smiling down on him. Where is his look? There is his look. Stern Pioneers, newly refreshed, coming in to put fire down on the garrisoned rifle squad. All the while in the north, we've got a rifle squad taking away Hans' munitions. Obersold that. Rifle company is not banned. It is given to the players if they want to gentlemen's agreement it out of the game. I, I suggested after seeing a few players do it that if you don't want to play with Rifle Company or Ost here, no, sorry, Ost here, Ost Troop, and you can do that. And I think that's a great way to go about it. Uh, I think I might be taking that forward into other tournaments. Um, if you want to gentlemen's agreement, something you can do to make the games more exciting for yourselves. Decent pressure put in from Hans. He's got four Volts Grenadiers in total. Stern Pioneers here laying a mine in a decent um, forward position. That will be a defensive mine for later in the game when uh, medium armour or heavy armour rocks onto the field. All the while, the map is generally in 
hands his favour, especially now the Lieutenant's been nearly demolished by Vulture Grenadier Fire. It will get away seemingly. It is indeed getting away, but if you notice the fuels both are in Hans's control. He's also got this Vulture Grenadier one pip of vet now ca capping the victory point. Continuous pressure down here, but the M20 is now of course outstanding uh, play from Von Aston. Noting that he's got four Vulture Grenadiers to play against, he has gone for the um, 50 cal. Stern Pioneers don't want to be up against an M20. Raketenwerfer is now coming onto the field for Hans, just on your picture there, so he has got the counter to the M20 if he needs it. Lowly health rifles here, no ambulance on the field as of yet, so they are dropping models for fun, seemingly. Sorry guys, let's keep on the M20, I'm just going to have a quick drink of tea. Don't know what he's waiting for with these. Are they taking a Shrek? They are not. Von Aston has gone for heavily cavalry commander, so it was not a duke. He genuinely does think it is um, overly powerful because he tried, as I've already discussed, he tried to get a gentleman's agreement out of the game, and then he said once I said no, if you've agreed something and he doesn't agree, that's you know, it's, there's nothing we can do about that. That's up to hands. So uh, he was then well, if you're happy with seeing. Every cavalry commander that only commander chosen in every game, so be it, kind of thing. He's not that salty, but you know, he was uh, overthinking things and such. Got riflemen under heavy fire here. The MG34 firing through the ghost bags and the war, seemingly getting the suppressive bullets in. All the while, Hans is now retaking the fuel, so a very even game. The only thing in it currently is the fact that Von Aston does not have a rear echelon troop at his disposal. Oh, the M20 goes over the mine! Is there anything that he can take care of it with, though? Smoke does get popped. Doesn't look like Hans has got anything to follow this. Oh, he gets the kill with the Raketen! Fantastic shot at max range from the Raketen. Literally max range. Looks like the rifles are going to get the bazooka, though, from the burning wreckage of the M20. But great shot from that Raketen for Hans. From Cloak, with the mine, max range, M20 down, rear echelon down, Colonel helping Hans is taking an authoritative lead on this game at this point. It's still up in the air as to who will win. In fact, with Heavenly Cavalry Commander, we can be seeing uh, perhaps, perhaps a very long game if Von Assen can make it until his uh, you know, Thompson field wielding Rangers and then eventual Pershing can stamp his authority back onto the game. And then also we've got a uh, front, line, front line infantry battle there. Not much happening. Don't think we've got... Yeah, we will have grenades from Hans. Well, incendiary grenades at his disposal should he want to waste 30 munitions. He's going to get the do the retreat. This is Hans playing well. This is Hans playing properly. This is Hans playing as though he wants to win a tournament. In the sense, we obviously got the battle group headquarters up now. Nothing uh, built from that quite yet. Ah, sorry, uh, Zizoka um, has just corrected me that helping hands his clan tag is complexity apparently, not Colonel. I'm gonna call him Colonel. Fuck you, Zizoka! And hands. He's Colonel Hands. I don't believe in clan tags. Why do you need a clan? Who needs friends? Range is now coming onto the field, so there we go. The high DPS units are spending 90 munitions to get their four times Thompson t uh, submachine guns. All the while, again, this house is being utilized to white the fuel. All the while, Von Aston has this fuel. In terms of victory point control, you'll notice it's uh, pretty much swung in helping hands' favor after the wipe and the M20 killed. Nice shots off on the bazooka wielding rifleman to die there. Incendiary grenade goes off into the building. They are going to get pushed off by the Rangers. So great retreat from Helping Hands. He did not linger to see what the Rangers were capable of. He just got the hell out of there. MG34 watching over the fuel for Helping Hands. Never understood people complaining about swearing on Company of Heroes cast when the actual soldiers within the game are saying pretty much every uh, swear word you can think of. Really don't understand that. Also, I find it really funny that, um, what's his name, the the lovely bloke that is our community manager, Kyle, who's been really helpful to me in this tournament, but he was so funny, he, he said, I don't want to say Aspag's name, you know, 20 times on stream, or 
And I, it's just funny because I don't think ass is even a word that is censored in game. So I, we, 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 we censored it ourselves. We called him pudding bag instead. And I think that's really funny. It's one of the top highlighting trends on uh, Kunihiro's Koto.org at the moment. Right, so now we've got Von Aston pushing into the center. He does indeed have his 50 cal in the strong house. Incendiary does go off into that house. He is just going to get out of it and reposition there. Nice shots off all the while. So Von Aston was not concentrating on this engagement. He is going to retreat along the, r the red cover though. Thompson's in the house. That is not their speciality. Uh, they, they are, a, you know, a close quarter combat specialist unit with those Thompsons. Target down. A capture point is under attack. I did hear target down. I'm not entirely sure what that might have been. I don't think it was anything major, to be honest. We've still got four volts grenadiers. We've got two MG34s. The mine misses from Von Aston. Hal Hans is now pushing hard, pushing strong. He's got his fuel back. He's got the MG34 watching over there. He's got the stern pioneers lying in wait for this MG34 behind a large fern tree. Bazooka Rifleman, of course, unfortunate nade there, he has spent a lot of munitions on those 30 munitions apiece nades by now, I think that's 90 at least he's spent on nades alone. MG34 is now going to suppress the Volks as the Lieutenant and the Advancing Rangers are going to push that away and it's going to have to be a full retreat from Hans. Captain entering onto the battlefield, still nothing built from Hans, he has got 150 fuel. Nice nade off on this MG34. Another nade dodged by hands. Great work by the Japanese British man. Lowly health rifles here. Still no ambulance. They are going to get headshots upon themselves. Another nade goes in. Will, ha Will hands again dodge? Yes, great dodge by hands. He's playing at the height of his powers in this game. Really great to see from hands. A lot of warm up games today, so he's uh, he's feeling good. He's feeling strong. In terms of map control, you will notice the fuel in the southwest isn't in Hans's control. It is cut off currently. Lieutenant putting fire down. These guys are in the, uh, the controlling power of the Bath Group headquarters, however, so not too much danger from that far. ISG putting decent fire down. No kills as of yet, though. Falschenjäger's on the field. Oh, Hans failed with the uh, Falschenjäger entrance. They did not enter into a building there. That is a fail. He's going to have to use them as a vanilla unit. Another dodge by Hans. He's dodged at least five grenades now. Really good play. I suppose there wasn't too many engagements happening at that exact time, but he, you know, to react to your MG being grenaded just in time is always good to see because you need to get it, uh, you know, ungarrisoned just. I you know, three seconds before you'd usually have to. So it has to be quite quick, because obviously they've got the um, packing up time. MG34 opening up on buildings. It always amazed me coming through just how powerful MGs are against garrisoned units. I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised. It is a, you know, an MG after all. In company use one, they were pretty useless. Not sure that is a cover battle. It does seem to me that the rifles aren't behind cover there. They are indeed going to have to run away. Falschen Jaeger's advancing. One kill. MG34 being a little bit cocky. He's in the way of the captain. Obviously the captain doesn't have grenades, but he doesn't want to mess with him anyway. All the while we've got the 50 cal in the house. Things up to five kills now. Not bad for an American machine gun. Another good mine coming in from Stern Pioneer. It's only a meter south where the M20 killing mine was earlier. In terms of overall tech, Hans still hasn't um, gone for anything. 180 fuel in the bank. Command points he has taken the lead, which would dictate to me that he does indeed have a little bit more kills, a lot more damage dealt. Felsham Jaeger's marauding, looking for danger, looking for action. And we've got a lull in activity, guys. This happens in Coney Heroes. It's the calm before the storm. Where do we think it's going to come? We've got these three squads going in the north. We've got Hans' three squads going south. It looks like they're going to miss each other for now. But this is going to allow Hans to cap this fuel, seemingly. Falschenjäger's under heavy kosh there. The 
ISG is going to have to do a lot of work against those Rangers to keep them suppressed. In fact, if Hans had known that they would be suppressed, he probably wouldn't have retreated those Falsham Jaegers. In the south, as predicted, Hans is now able to push for that f um, fuel point, get that under control. Not that he needs fuel that much at this point anyway. He has had this truck just waiting to be deployed for a long time now. Another nade dodge from Hans. How much munitions? I think that's six. At least six or seven, perhaps. So, a lot, basically. 210 munitions wasted by um, Von Aston. Obviously not wasted because he's been pushing Hans away from positions, but in general wasted because, you know, he's not killed anything, has he? He, he could have been using smoke instead against the MG34s and getting up close to them. That probably would have been better. It's the ISG is doing pretty good work against the Rangers. They are an expensive unit, 400 uh, manpower. Pretty hefty reinforcement costs, no doubt, as well. Good retreat from Hans there. By the way, I'm not a Hans fanboy. I'm just more impressed by Hans in this game than I have been by Von Aston overall, I believe. More than, he more than happy to see Von Aston win this. I'd, I'd really like to see a... Uh, this series go for all five games. I really like to see uh, lots of parity between the two two players. There's a major reporting for action. Major coming onto the field. Eight, 90 fuel remaining, so he has got enough. He could push for an earlier Sherman. Of course, he will. He could wait for the 13 command point Pershing if he wanted to, but he's not. He doesn't know what helping hands is going to do, does he? Elsewhere, we've got Falschenjägers pushing north. Another Falschenjäger squad also in the north, so in general, those rifles are between a rock and a hard place. Stern Pioneer's in a really long pitched engagement with this captain here. In the centre, we've still got the 50 cal in the building. That building's really healthy still. Surprised we haven't seen the ISG putting pressure down on it. So the Stern Pioneer's are going to have to retreat through. Oh, the ambulance is pushing up really north. That's an interesting play from Von Aston. I'm not a Hans fanboy, I just love anime. I just saw in chat, and that is can't be further from the truth. <laughs> Not a fan of Japanese nerdy culture, other than Final Fantasy. Great pressure in the south by both players, and it's an absolute killing uh, match so far. Both players are pushing hard in all three areas of the map, the centre, the south, the north. And it's really great to see so much territory changing hands. We haven't seen any decisive blows, other than the M20, the rear echelon kill. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty much... All's, you know, all's fair in love and war, or whatever the phrase might be, to be honest. I just made that up, I don't think that's a phrase. ISG, how's that thing faring? It's only up to two kills, but its um, suppression value has been uh, pretty damn good. And of course, I really want to see Hans try and put pressure on the central building, but... Because in terms of... No, actually, victory points, he's bloody winning. He's got a hundred and nearly twenty lead there, and he's pushing hard with the Falsham Jaegers and the MG34 backup. This, however, will, of course, allow Van Aston to now swing to the south. So that's the beauty of this game. Here we go, we've got the Sherman entering the battlefield. Medium armor is now on the field. Only got, well, we've got three Panzer Strikes and a Raketin in answer to the Sherman, so if he was to group them, he could do well. Ah, the phrase is all fair in love and war. I think I'd said that. But I don't think it made any sense in the context of which I was saying it. <laughs> Great shots off on the bazooka rifleman that stole that bazooka, if you remember, from the M20. Stern pioneers with decent levels of veteran sleep, but the Sherman's going to push him entirely away now. Will, what will Hans splooge on? What's he going to do? Looks like he's got the Schwerpanzer headquarters set up here, so he's probably waiting for the, per the um, Panther. Which, because he knows Von Aston was going to go heavily cavalry company, is a great answer. So we're going to see Pershing versus Panther. Very excited to see that in G1 of this semi-final series. I'm psyched. Are you psyched? Pershing versus Panther train. Hype city. Here we come. All the while, so Hans has been pushed from the north. He goes south. He caps the south. Great map uh, control and trading from both players. Pershing does not necessarily win that engagement, by the way. Panther, if it can keep supported and keep, um, you know, its frontal armor facing and not get flanked by the Pershing, it can win that. 
rate of fire is arguably higher from Pershing and such, especially with veterancy, but uh, it's it's not uh, a ruffle stomp of the contest, that's for sure. Getting healed, he's got um, his army ready to dispatch into the centre. We're going to have to see a big push from Hans soon, because I think he's got the momentum, it w w must be said. Sherman getting some much needed repairs there. Finally, we do indeed see the ISG raining hellfire upon that strong building in the centre. The ambulance just behind it. Be good if Hans knew about that. Holy crap, guys. I'm uh, sorry to report that Rangers seem to have died and I missed it. That's a really upsetting. <laughs> Sorry I missed that, guys. It has been a frenetic matchup so far. I'm trying to stay on top of seeing things like that. So that put Hans m massively into the lead, doesn't it? Hans has uh, killed Rangers. That puts him massively in the lead in terms of the manpower battle. And that will explain just why he's on 70 pop cap and uh, Von Ass is only on, well, he's on 65 now. Now that he's uh, put his crew members back in the, sh the Sherman. Again Rangers pushed away. Sherman now entering the battlefield. Newly repaired. No skin on that thing. Just uh, American green. Shrek is supporting this MG34. It's probably not going to be enough to push away the Sherman. He probably will stay in that engagement. Postman delivering me something in the background. And what's this? Enter the Panther Funf. The Panzer Funf. Sorry, that's just how Germans say Funf. <laughs> nice Shrek shot. We've got another Volksgrenadier coming in for the rear armor of the Sherman. Panthers hauling ass to get up there. Great frontal armor penetration. There's not much in backup. Von Aston. This could be game if, if Helping Hands goes for it. Is he going to go for it? How is he feeling? No. It's a tournament level game. He's seen a bazooka and it's just enough to spook him. That could have been Hans literally going hell for leather there. I think if that was also match, Hans would have, especially if he's on stream, Hans would have gone for that. But as it's a tournament game, he's not gone for it. Panther putting shots in there. I don't know why he's doing that. Oh, he's waited for the infantry to push south. Now he's going for it. Really good call from Helping Hands. He's let the bazookas push. He's retreated his infantry. However, that will now leave his uh, rear armor exposed when the bazookas catch up with him. Possibly not the greatest call ever. He is going to reverse away from there. Great um, game sense from Hans, I think. Good rear armor shot in. Do you see the snare on the Pershing? There aren't any AT guns in backup. There is one building. He's still, he's, well, he's nowhere near Pershing because he went Sherman. The glacial, the glacis front armor of the pan, uh, Panther can literally bounce bazooka shots for days, especially now we've got the MG34 suppressing them, so that Pershing, sorry, that Panther will be fine. And here comes Hans, he's got the Falschim Jaegers, a two-man squad there, that just shows you just how fearful he was of losing that panther. Fifty cal point suppression. Sherman is now fully repaired. So you can see what Hans was going for, but it did not work off. Two bazookas on too many uh, squads there. ISG's not quite made the impact that Hans might have liked. Five kills only. So we've now got triple cap in Von Aston's favour. He is about to draw level with Hans in the next 30 seconds. In terms of veterans, we do have a Vet 5 squad for Hans, 17 kills. Vet 4 on 18 seemingly. Cal point decent fire down there. That's a good positioning for the 50 cal. However, he does fear squad white there. He's going to have to retreat. It did a little bit of um, time damage. That's a new phrase. Time damage. It's where you uh, hinder your opponent just enough to uh, 
you know, time's the fourth resource and all that. You heard it first. Time damage. Panther coming in. Obviously not the greatest anti-infantry presence ever. In fact, one of the worst. It doesn't have its pinnacle mount MG machine gun either. MG machine gun. Sherman keeping at bay. It's waiting for the... Another grenade goes in. Another grenade dodged. Another grenade dodged. Grenades just have not been effective. Great overall presence from both players. Actually, it's been trade. The map has been traded quite, uh, quite well there. Sherman coming in. Panther smells blood. The AT gun is in backup, so the Panther's going to have to stay behind this heavy shot blocker there. Great shots in. Range is advancing. They do. They'll fire it up, it seems. They are now, however, pinned. Rifleman possibly going down to the Fulcher Jaegers. Skin of teeth. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. And this is an absolute killing match. We're 26 minutes in. We're pretty level in terms of victory points. Von Aston has indeed taken the lead, so the ebb and flow of victory point control has gone in either player's favour multiple times now. ISG trying its hardest to put some any kind of pressure down. In the north, we've got hands capping up the north. Two rifles pushing into the south. Pershing only on two kills. It is now using getting the pintle mount. Must be said that both players have used their munitions. They have been spending them. Um, sometimes in even in competitive level play, you'll see that munitions do get pooled, but grenades have been how Von Aston spent his, Shrek's have been how Hans has spent his. Four of those things now. And indeed the pinnacle mount too. And it's now more of a World War I battle seemingly. Hans is notorious, not notorious. Yeah, notorious for what I like to call um, a static, a moving kind of, uh, I'll think of the phrase for it. Basically, he has a prepared position that he slowly moves up the field, especially with Wehrmacht and uh, Soviets and anything with a powerful AT gun. He'll just build a wall. He's got all of his units in supporting each other, and he slowly creeps, so it's like a creeping barrage, basically, upon his opponent. And that's how he likes to play competitively. It's al he's always done that, even in Company of Heroes 1. Especially on maps like Alongraskaya, you'll just notice that Hans will suddenly, especially I can display this better in the attack map, you'll notice all of his units are in a line and he will push up in, sim in a symbiotic fashion, supporting arms very slowly and creep upon his opponents. And if we see him get to the late game and if he re regains and retains his veterancy, it can snowball in Hans' flavour. Uh, flavour? <laughs> Favour. Words are hard. English is hard. So now Hans has got two victory points, so we could be seeing him bring Von Aston down to his level. Pershing pretty uh, impotent, seemingly, at the moment. He's not managed to get any killing blows in on the Sher Sherman. And it must be said that Von Aston is very close to the 600 manpower required to get his Pershing out. A capture point is under attack. Pitched engagement in the centre here. Not much to shout about. Must be said that uh, Helping Hands is having a lot of pressure. In terms of... Bloody hell, look at the amount of fuel and manpower Hands has. He has enough for a second... Second heavy tank if he wants it one himself in the Panther. Which is meant to be, by the way, be a medium tank. But it was a little bit too heavy by the standards of the time to be classed as a medium tank, in my opinion. It's like they copied the T-34, but Hitler got in the way and said, No, I want it to be bigger. And I've seen one in real life. They are massive. Here comes the Pershing, as expected. Hands with three Felschemjäger squads now. One in the north there. Newly constructed. Using it to cap. First shot misses from the Pershing. Will Hans use the Panther as a lone gunner against the Pershing? 
Not entirely sure he'll go for that, especially with the Sherman giving back up and the AT gun. Sorry, my camera work was terrible there. And the AT gun um, in support. No, both players are tentative. This is a tournament level game. We're not, probably not going to see an all-in attack from either player until they're comfortable with the armies they possess and then we'll see a raging crescendo of violence. Great shot in from the MG34 there. Shreks are um, going to cap the fuel. So what we could see from Hans, he's got four vetted Volksgrenadiers with Shreks. He's got a Panther. He's got more than a... well, he's getting close to having enough for a second Panther. So he could really go for an all-in push of his own if he felt like it. But the timing would have to be right. Great shot in from on the Sherman. Another Shrek gets frontal armor penetration. Will the Panther get the killing blow, which needs one shot in, does indeed get the shot in. The AT gun, the American AT gun, of course, is utterly incompetent and impotent. Doesn't really do much at all. Great shot in on the Stern Pioneers there from what I believe must have been a bazooka or possibly a friendly fire ISG shot. Pershing's been uh, doing pretty much nothing. In the north you've got Rangers capping. A T gun gets decrewed, possibly by Vulture Grenadiers in the central house there. And this is a fantastic matchup. 30 minutes in, we are now in authoritatively in the late game. ISG shots going in. Pershing, two kills only. I think the Panther's up to seven now he's got the Pintel mount. I think it's going to have to be repaired though. He hasn't elected for the mechanized headquarters quite yet. Victory points are pretty much equal. We could be in for an hour long game if this pace keeps up. What a tiring first game for Elbingham. By the way, first grenade I've seen actually land on screen. No doubt another one probably has landed off off screen when my camera hasn't been focused but uh yeah about 300 munitions spent on grenades in this game finally see one actually do some health damage doesn't actually get a kill though Pershing decides to kill the small box in front of it instead of focusing on the MG34 Shrek's are coming into backup we have got the Rakesenwerfer in wait the Panther I can hear is fully repaired Helping Hands does not have the pop cap for a second Panther. That might be why he's not built it. Look at his army, it is vast and wieldy. What that allow him to do is have, similar to uh, American war, Allied War Machine, and the fact that when his Pershing, if it died, rather not when, he could just rock another one straight onto the field. Bazooka shots bouncing again off the glacis plate. Frontal armor of the uh, Panther is utterly massive. They stole an MG34 there, so I can confirm now that three MG34s have been built this game. Don't quite. So two things we missed in this game: we missed Rangers going down and MG34 being stolen. With such a high frenzy matchup, it's difficult to capture literally everything. Nice. This is where Fulcher Jaegers exceed, especially with an ISG shot going in. If that had hit, it would have killed models. And what is the... The Pershing has not been in a position to do much at all. It's got four kills still. All the while, the Panther's up to nine now. In the north. Stolen MG34 coming back to bite hands in the arse. He's having to uh, spread those units and retreat one of them. Surprised this house is still up, it's still on 70% health and it's bloody 33 minutes into the game. Usually see that thing get focused. These riflemen could be going down if they linger with this Stern Pioneer. No, they do get away, but they were lucky too. Very lucky indeed. Pushing, watching over this here. Hitting a wall. Volksgrenadier is lying in wait. Schwerpan's headquarters does have line of sight on that, especially with the Volksgrenadier giving them the it. Bet 2 MG34 watching over the centre, getting victory points back in hands. Control, he has slipped down to under half. Under half at 34 minutes, so Jesus Christ, this could be a long game. Von Kluge, I might be needing you after all. Point 
Right, Panther smells blood. She gets a shot through the building, seemingly. And the Pershing's still not doing much at all. We have got a nice engagement in the north here. Great flank from Helping Hands. He went all the way around the shot blockers to flank the stolen MG34. Shrek versus Lieutenant engagement there. Lowly high for health riflemen. They do indeed push away the other MG34. ISG has now crept up to his vet too. He's only got 10 kills still, but uh, well, it's just not very much considering how long it's been on the battlefield, but it is slowly creeping up until it's going to be a more potent unit. Pershing's going to force away these two units that were advancing. God, these guys are lingering. MG34s can get kills if you stay getting shot by them for too long. There you go, one man dies. He's going to have to retreat. He does, however, introduce the Rangers into the situation. We do have a 50 munition off-map smoke barrage. It'll be interesting to see that, especially if we get down to really low victory points late in the game, because of course it can just be uh, like a... S it's like an, uh, an orbital iron cannon strike from space is the uh, best way to describe the off-map smoke barrage. It just seems to rock it out of nowhere and pepper everything with smoke. Really good for capping victory points. Volksgrenadier is having to retreat. Another great retreat from Hans. He loses two squads and retreats very quickly. We haven't seen many squad wipes at all for him. Just the MG34 gets stolen mainly. In fact, that's that's exemplified by four of, three of his four Volksgrenadiers are at Vet 5 now. Lieutenant pushing away the MG34. It does make it into the house. Pushing up to 12 kills. Volksgrenadier is pushing the, the stolen MG34, which is back where it started. Nice incendiary grenade goes in. Doesn't do much though. Rifle grenade, rifle, uh, riflemen putting pressure on. They are going to get into the mansion house or the townhouse or whatever it is. Pushing, marauding. Still, Hans is now down to 84 pop cap. Possibly is strategically not reinforcing his squads to full. Another grenade dodge from Hans. All the while he's microing in the south, he still manages to uh, dodge a grenade in the north. Great play from the, the Brits from the land of the rising sun. So he gets back in the townhouse. There is this uh, Ford Model T or some shit that they're behind. In the south we've got a captain watching over the victory points. So victory points are a pressing concern for both players. Hans now has slipped below 190. Quite low for him. We could be seeing Vet 3 rifles go down. This will be the third time rifles escape the clutches of Hans at this point. No, they escape again, but he gets the full Shimnikas out of the house! Come on, Hans, you can get that. Oh, he gets it. Did I say, come on, Hans, you can get that? That sounds horribly biased. I mean, oh no, Von Aston's riflemen have died! I'll be on Von Aston's side in the next game, I promise. Because if Hans, especially if Hans wins it. Pershing somehow got, oh my god, it's got up to bloody 16 kills somehow. Last time we checked it was on 4, so it's been getting a lot of uh, model kills here and there. Missed need from the Vulture it is. It is obviously good at... The 50 cal this time, putting pressure down on that squad, causing it to retreat. In the south, it seems like Hans was trying to take the ISG really close to the captain, but he is going to um, sulk out of there. Just been informed that I put the Pershing White of a four man um, Falschemjäger squad with one shot. Again, sorry I missed that. I do capture quite a lot, but I can't capture it all. AC gun is now being decreed. The Pershing senses blood. The Sherman's getting pushed away. Not the Sherman, the bloody Pershing, but there is a Sherman on the field as well. And Hans is pushing all the while in the south against the Major, which could be dying. Do not cap with Rangers on the AT gun. He does indeed cap with Rangers. That's expensive for Von Aston. Very expensive AT gun now. Hans pushing in the south. Still, the captain watches over this victory point, but Hans does have two of them. He's going to bring Von Aston slowly down to his level. I believe the KT's pop cap, if I'm not wrong, is 26 currently in this version of the game. It has been brought down to 21 as of the December patch. Oh, 
ISG hasn't been the most overly powerful unit. What's he doing? Oh, of course the ambulance died, so now he's using the uh, <laughs> the medics as a frontline troop. That's going to be interesting. Well, here we go. We've got the creeping, crawling, um, prepared position from helping hands now in the centre. Possibly going to see that standard of play again from him. But to be fair, it has been a very fluid and mech... Uh, Mobile game from both players in general. Sherman putting pressure down on the MG34. That is going to disrupt things for Hans. In the south, he's got a nice position with this house under control. He still hasn't got that southern victory point. That captain still lingers. Of his Falsham Jaegers, one is now Vet 4 with 13 kills, another at Vet 6. Pershing pushing into the south. So yeah, we talked about Hans's luck earlier, but now that he's lost a vet, uh, sorry, a four-man Falschemjäger to a one Pershing sh shot, not going too great for him. He is going to retreat with that squad there. He hasn't got any many Shreks in backup at the moment, so he can't push on those tanks as much as he might like. But it must be said, and we'll open the tap map to exemplify this. That map is largely in Hans's control. The amount of lag you get for opening the tap map is crazy, isn't it? He's finally choosing to push on the captain in the south as well. He's got the Rakuten lying in wait in cloak. He's decided to take up a house position there. A lot of his troops currently are in base. But then, same goes for Von Aston. They are spending some significant time on repairing. The Pershing, it must be said, is up to Vet 2, so that's got crew grenades now, of all things. He has pushed away the captain with the Stern Pioneer, so he will have a triple cap shortly. But Von Aston still has a healthy lead, nearly 100 victory points. Is he going to retreat straight away? Yes, he fears the Pershing now. 95 pop cap for Helping Hands, 76 for Von Aston. So overall, uh, Helping Hands' squad pre uh, preservation has been superior. Oh, 83, so he probably had the, sh the Sherman out uh, repairing it at the time. No doubt. ISG shot misses. Clumped rifle Minora target there behind the, uh, the victory point and the tank trap. Pershing's lying in wait, seemingly. Could be preparing for something now. In the north, Felschmierk is pushing against the rifleman. Little Volksgrundy is waiting for them. MG34 is again going back into the centre. Hasn't seen the Pershing for a while. He's going to need more AT backup this time if he wants to try and hold it with an MG34. ISG's up to Vet 3. It's on 11 kills only. So only one since we last spoke. It's about 30 minutes. Obviously, it's uh, health damage has probably been quite decent. Good shot from the Sherman. Nearly wiped that Falschmjäger in its entirety. Does kill three men. Major somehow is still alive. Don't quite know how that one works out. He's got Shreks waiting behind the heavy house shot blocker. Fuel count for hands now 448, which is uh, massive, and that accounts for the fact that obviously he's been close to pop cap for the majority. He can't quite get out the second. I, I'd imagine he'd want a second Panther if he had all the pop cap in the world, just so he can go toe to toe with the Pershing and pretty much push the Sherman off the map if he had a second Panther. Great wipe on the Raketon. Pershing going right up to the house. That is a danger for the squad. Panther's going to get a rear armor shot off, though. No, it is indeed frontal armor. It does swing around just in time. That is the mobility of the Pershing for you. In the north, you've got Van Aston capping cap that victory point. Vet 5 squad in the house in danger of going down. Lieutenant has been killed at some point as well. You'll notice that is missing. And we've got multiple wipes for our hands. Multiple stages of the game. When I upload this to YouTube, I fancy going through the bloody thing again and working out when things died. It's been that bloody... It's been an absolute killing match. And I do thank the people in Twitch chat helping me um, call the action. It does feel like I've got a third man... or well, a second man with me. For the finals, I am going to try and get a second man to cast with me. Because it is too much work for one man at times in a high-level tournament play, I find. Northern uh, victory point was capped. Hans isn't electing, so a little bit of fatigue shown by Hans there. He isn't quite on it with capping that victory point back. But he does, however, have two, so it's not that big and pressing concern in the world. Stern Pioneer's pushing. Rangers up to nine kills, going to retreat. 
Pershing on 22 kills, Panther on 17, so good parity between the units, both on Veteran C2. Obviously, uh, Veteran C2 Panthers not quite as equivocal to a Veteran C2 Pershing. Nice shot off there. He's going to push on the, Sher the Sherman, no doubt. Shame the Shreks don't hit for helping hands. Great front armor penetration from the Panther. No, no damage caused on it. AT gun on very little health. And he's pushing hard with his Shreks, not quite getting the shots in he wants. Perhaps he needs to really just sit back and then push from all angles with his Shreks in order to get a killing blow off on a tank. He needs a bit of timing, like an early game kind of grenade push timing uh, kind of thing. But just look at the map for Hans. He's got everything he needs. I've seen the... Uh, the medic do their work outside of the ambulance. It's a shame Helping Hands doesn't have any form of artillery right now because that would be absolutely ridiculous. Von Aston calling for a Scott. That wouldn't be a... Sorry, Von Cluj. I'm getting mixed up between my Vons. Von, uh, so helping hands is now, what he's been doing is not, uh, he's been stopping his ma manpower investments and he now has finally built his second um, Panther, but unfortunately with being at PopCap 100 he's not going to be able to get it on the field. But as soon as anything slips below 100 it's like he's reserved the Panther now and it'll just pop straight out. So it's an interesting tactic from Hans. You know, if he's got two Fallschirmjägers with at low health in base, he's not going to be able to deploy them because the Panther's going to rock onto the field. But to him, that's more important. He's queued up the Panther. Oh, P Pershing in a spot of bother. It is only the ISG, not the Urukatan. Another penetration. The Sherman's going to come in. The Sherman now, if they focus the Sherman... This is a very dangerous situation for both players because if the Volksgrenadier has got uh, crushed, they're not going to get crushed. They, one of them does get nearly destroyed. Two men remaining. It did look for an instant like it had been destroyed. And that is enough to get the second Panther out. It's been queued. It's now on the field. So now he's got the Sherman out of the way. He can push for the Pershing. Do you have one AT gun? If he was to get rid of that as well, this could be an all-in attack from Hans. He's going to go for it. He senses blood. Hans is going for it now. AT gun down, turret's not facing the right way, that is frustrating in Company of Heroes. It now is facing the right way, he's focusing the Pershing, he needs a frontal armor penetration. Where's the second? Where's the second Panther? That's coming into field of view. But it might not be needed at this point though. And D goes down, second Panther not needed and GG is called from Von Aston. Great game there. Fantastic stuff. Really great to see. What a fantastic game. Um, we missed a few wipes. Do apologise. But in general, that was just a fantastic game. I'm sure you'll appreciate uh, this series is off to a cracking start. Many people might have predicted that Von Aston would, would be very strong against Helping Hands. In fact, it's a very difficult one to call. So now that it's gone uh, through game one and we're into game two, it's pretty much anybody's game. Help Helping Hands has taken the lead, however. Let me just update that. Ready for...